Hello, happy Friday. I hope wherever you are that you and your loved ones are safe and well and that you're having a good week and a good day. This is not a regular video. This is the vlog. I was trying to finish writing what I had started earlier in the week and I, I got lost in the emotion of it. And it's not a bad upset. It's just emotional feeling what I wanted to talk about. And so I was like, you know, forget it. Just, just speak it because it's better to just speak it. Okay, earlier in the week, I was out running errands and I saw a beautiful Maya Angelou quote on a sign and I thought, I have to share that in the blog this week. And I didn't realize how relevant it was gonna be. I'm sorry, I'm so emotional. The quote is, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. And that's where this sign ended. But the quote actually goes on and she said, in fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, how you can still come out of it. And I didn't realize how very relevant that was going to be for me this week. Um, I just got home. <laughs> it's so silly. I just got home from watching um, the dance showcase or the, the small version of what it would have been at the school I used to volunteer at to make costumes. And I wasn't in any way involved in this one. And it would have been my last one if I had not had a stroke and everything else. Because it was going to be the end. My friend um, is moving on from that school. And so we decided that it was going to be this big, you know, go out with a bang of a show and, and none of that happened. And with the pandemic and COVID and everything else, it was just not possible to do what we normally used to do. And what we normally used to do involved, you know, him choreographing with the kids and we're talking, you know, upwards of 60 something kids sometime, 50 to 70 kids. Um, and each class, it was two grades and each class would be doing um, 20 to 30 pieces of dance um, and they would be range from a couple of minutes to longer pieces to a few kids to the whole class and so I would be costuming every bit of that and it was hard it was hard work but I loved it it was very physical it was very dramatic I would you know I would get all worked up and they'd get all worked up and we'd all argue and we'd have to agree to disagree sometimes and 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 also in that time I would be doing the school musicals which was a whole other crowd of kids um, and dressing all of them and then in December, everything ground to a complete halt for me. And I was so proud of the fact that over the last, it was like almost 11 years, I managed to I managed to do all of that for so long. And there were moments that I hated it. And there were moments that I loved it. But then on days like today, I would be so proud of them. And we'd all be so exhausted, but they would go up on stage and they would do these beautiful pieces of music and dance. And I would just be thinking, you know, some of those kids never danced in their lives and they were in this program. And it was so beautiful to see it all come together. And I knew how hard they had struggled because I watched it. You know, it would take months to put a show like that together. And we did two shows a year and they would be in class and I would show up, you know, like two months towards from the date of the show and, and start working and seeing what they were doing and get a feel for it and then pull out all the clothes and match and mismatch and make things and deconstruct things. And it was a lot of work. And I always felt so proud that no matter how much pain I was in by the end, that I had done it with them and for them and for my friend who I adore and COVID and my health just completely blew that up. So today it was very bittersweet being back in that space and then watching this group of kids that I really didn't know. I only got to see the eighth graders for a short time in the fall. But when I arrived and these groups of kids that I didn't even know, they heard I was there and they were all screaming and yay, she's here. And I was thinking, I, I never even met you, but how lovely that you, you know, I wish I had had time with them because it, this wasn't supposed to be the way it was. And so that quote, you know, I found that quote three days ago and I thought, 
how relevant it is. And, like, aside from my own issues, like, I'm so sorry. I'm so emotional. I did not anticipate feeling like this at all. I'm not even this upset. I haven't even been this upset since I've been home. But then all of a sudden I started talking about it and it all just fell out of my eyes. <laughs> um, but watching kids at that age, you know, face each other and fight with themselves and to find their space and to find the courage to get out there and dance the way they want to and the way they know they can or they've never done it before but they want to try it's such a magical i had such a an, a blessed front row seat to seeing a, a couple few hundred kids hundreds of kids in the last 10 11 years go through that process of growth and development and find it in themselves to say, you know, I've never taken a dance class, but I can dance and I can help choreograph this piece. Cause some of the things they, they choreographed and, um, and it was just so nice to see that process. And it happened every year, like from sixth grade, definitely in sixth grade and watching the, you know, the confidence and these kids who I was not allowed to costume the sixth graders. They did that themselves. But what even watching that, the growth in that, I could only advise and provide materials. But seeing these children grow so much and face so many hard moments because they were the age that they were. And, you know, hormones and friends and not friends and everything else colliding in these moments of of clarity and disappointment and beauty and to see it all would be left on the dance floor and it was just I felt so lucky to have that seat and to be able to see so many kids and work with so many kids to accomplish what they wanted to accomplish in those moments and all the while in the background dealing with my own health stuff and like some days were better than others and the kids didn't know any of that. You know, my friend did, but I mean, he was always very helpful to me. But I watched them today and I thought it was, there was one particular number that was never my favorite. Like seeing the end product. Yes, I loved it. It's a big Broadway number. And I, I did not ever think that song would reduce me to tears the way it did today. <laughs> and it did because I used to, you know, it was hard to costume and it was very elaborate and you know, very glitzy. And I mean, it looked beautiful in the end and we did it. And sometimes we did it twice a year and I was watching them do it today. And I thought it was like a very glittery cap on a beautiful 10 years. And I wished that I had more time with them. And so that quote that I found three days ago about, you know, I have to read it again. Cause now I, I can't remember the exact pieces of it. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can still come out of it. And my gosh, we spend most of our lives rising up like phoenixes and, and having disappointment, and that's life. And so much of it is good, but there's so much hard out there, right? And we all face these defeats. But especially when you're chronically ill, man, I think any one of you that's felt, you know, felt this way and had a health scare or a diagnosis that you didn't expect, we can relate to this quote so much because it's most of, getting a chronic illness diagnosis. <laughs> there are so many defeats along the way. So many. I'm so sorry. I didn't expect this. But each time we get defeated, we have to rise up from that and remake ourselves and learn ourselves again and figure out who we are and who we're going to be in this new skin of having, you know, fill in the blank, whatever it is. And, you know, it's a constant battle and constant back and forth to feel who where we are in that moment and, and how we're going to deal with it and what we're going to tell our doctors and how many doctors we have to see and blah, 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 blah. It's an on and on and on. Constant back and forth. And I was thinking when I was walking home, I was thinking about 
It was so disappointing in December not to get to see their show after all of their hard work. Um, because we had to postpone it till after the holidays and I never got to see them and I didn't get to see them dance and it was just disappointing. And my friend videotaped it and sent it to me, which is lovely. But I, it's different when you're in the room and, and, and you get to be a part of it and you know that you supported them in some way and this is just a very emotional day. I did not expect this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But I think you can all relate, even if it's not a health thing. Defeats in work, in school, in relationships with your kids, with your friends, with your family. It's a constant. We rise, we rise up from it and we have to be who we are in that moment and decide if we have to remake ourselves in that moment. And when you're diagnosed with something, my gosh, you are constantly, I've said this before, you are a chameleon because you constantly have to remake yourself in the, the skin that you're in then, you know what I mean? And, you know, when I was thinking about the numbness in my left foot, that's new. And I have to deal with that now. And I have to face that, whatever that is, what that means. And am I looking forward to that? No, I'm not. Because he's probably going to suggest some, like an EMG or something, which is like, I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? I'll live with the numbness. <laughs> um, but back to the quote, we face many defeats, but we must not be defeated. And we can use those moments. And I'm not saying it's a Pollyanna, like, oh, we can take each sad and hard thing and turn it into a victory because it's not a victory. It's, it's a piece of crap. It's hard. It sucks. But we can find the strength in ourselves and figure out who we're going to be in those moments, who we can trust in those moments and keep stepping onward. And I'm not saying it's easy because now I'm stepping with one foot that has bones that are going the wrong way and one foot that is numb on one side. <laughs> it's just almost funny because it's like, excellent. One more thing to add to my medical resume. Um, but I just... I want all of you to, I'm sitting in a very squeaky rocking chair right now. <laughs> um, I want all of you to know that even when it's hard, do not forget your power to, you might face another defeat tomorrow or an hour from now, or whatever, but do not let yourself be squashed and stepped on and, and, beaten down by a defeat because we face these hard things every day and find groups that are supportive online. I'm, you know, my stroke groups and my RSD groups, I, I cannot thank them enough. And my family and the people around you, you know, utilize those resources, whatever you need to do to be able to get up and face the next defeat. And I, I know that sounds like flip but I'm not being I'm not being felt about it because I know it's hard and I know especially with health we have no control over what's happening to us at all like people that think that you're delusional because we don't and we don't choose this this is not what we chose I would not be choosing this for myself I would not have chosen to miss out on finishing the year in a better way for the kids and for my friend and I I wouldn't have had a stroke. I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have. But my point is, each time I have faced something that has been very hard, I have remade myself emotionally and physically in some way and kept going because I realized that's the only choice that I had and that's the only choice I have. And I will not let any of this health stuff stop me from loving life and being in life and and now I have to figure out what I'm going to do next what's my next act because physically costuming thing is it's too much and maybe I'll go back to it someday and maybe I'm not done with it but I'm done with it in the way that it, I was doing it for the last decade and that's hard and that really slammed home today when I was in that auditorium with those kids and I thought it's the end of an era really and that's hard and it's, it's crap and it hurts, but it's also okay because I got to be a part of a lot of 
greatness there. And I'm so grateful. And so now I'm going to wrap up because I've been going on and on and on. And I just want all of you to feel your strength in these moments of defeat or seemingly what we're def being defeated by. And finding the ways to rise up from the ashes, be the phoenix from the beyond, and like phoenix yourself into the next act because we can do this you know we really can we lean on each other and we're all here for each other and, and we can do it and so i'm gonna go <laughs> get, get a grip on myself <laughs> and get ready for my next defeat <laughs> because in every defeat truly there's a victory because we come out on the other side of it if we if we if we're able to if we fight for it and i will fight for every victory i can because no way no way am I going down like that. You know, not with these stupid health issues. I'm not doing that. And so I think I'm I think I'm under control now. I don't know. We'll see. I wish each and every one of you the very best afternoon, the safest, calmest, peaceful, low pain weekend. I wish all the dads, the grandpas, the uncles the moms who are both mom and dad, the teachers, the mentors, the babysitters, everybody. I wish you a happy Father's Day. Fathers are extraordinary people. I celebrate and honor my husband, who's the most wonderful father, every day, because I'm so grateful to him. And <laughs> that asked me, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But dads, I don't think, get all the credit that they deserve. And so I wish you a very, very, very happy Father's Day. And please know that I am sending out all the good wishes to you and to your loved ones for this weekend and every day. Um, but be safe out there. I will see you next week for another video and um, next week for another vlog. <laughs> Take care. Be well. Bye.